Oh, hey guys. Um, this is Off Green with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Stacy. And today we are going to be doing another entry for the Frugal Family Home. Frugal. Oh, Frugal Family Food. It's like the. All the F's get me all tongue twisted. Frugal Family Food on Facebook. Tangie the Caver's wife and Amanda at Fundamental Home are the ones who started and it is pretty cool. Great recipes every Friday. And today is my day because I think the month of January they're doing everything with healthy food. And I'm all about healthy food and healthy living here. So I wanted to do um, sweet potato burritos. These can totally be vegan, 100% vegan. You can add meat to them. Um, and there's so many ways to do this and it, it is it is very frugal because actually everything here I have gotten from my garden or I've made my cheese um, You could make it totally 100% from your garden And of course if you don't have a garden or have accessibility to getting that you could get all this at the grocery store And it is very very inexpensive to do so all I did these are two large sweet potatoes and I'm going to um, put these to the side We're going to use these in a minute because they're the base of my burrito. I've already put in some unrefined coconut oil I put in the pan to warm up and all you need basically is the sweet potatoes onions garlic and the other main ingredient is black beans so we did a video on that so we'll link that above check that out if you're not already soaking and adding an acid medium into your your soaking process it's very important that you do that because it helps so much to help for digestibility but uh, I'm gonna go ahead I went ahead this is left over so we're gonna use that in it too and then uh, let's go ahead and get started with this. So I'm gonna put a big onion. I love onions, so I use tons and tons of onions. And a little too hot. And speaking of onions, we just did a video on onions. If you guys aren't uh, getting ready for your gardens, go ahead and start getting some different varieties of onions. So I'll put my onions in there and you wanna kinda saute them on a lower heat. And then you wanna add garlic. So nothing smells, smells better than garlic in your uh, kitchen. So I'm going to do about four or five cloves of garlic in my garlic press. And if you guys don't have a little garlic press, these things are the best. They make getting your garlic so simple. And that's one thing I had go. I go to one thing with the Amish. You get to go to Tupperware parties and the Pamper Chef parties because they have them a lot around here. All right, that's good enough. So. So I'm going to let that saute. So I have my uh, onions and garlic. I'm going to let it saute for a few minutes so it kind of caramelizes a little bit. And then I will be back in just a few minutes. All right, guys. So I'm back. Um, the, on the onions sauteed and the garlic. And then I went ahead and put about a pint, a pint jar of beans in there, black beans. And then my little ingredient that makes it really pop is some cumin. So I'm going to put some cumin in there. So I put like a teaspoon or so of cumin in there. I love cumin, so I put a little extra. <laughs> I'm going to add some water to this. Now the thing is with the water, as when we put the sweet potatoes in there, to make it be a little bit more smooth, you can add water as much as you need. So I'm going to mash these beans just a little bit. And then I'm going to add in my... Uh, sweet potatoes. Now, I've tried this recipe a bunch of different ways. You can just put the sweet potatoes in by themselves. I kind of doctor it up. I went ahead and I'm going to add some of my Ceylon cinnamon. I also did a video on the differences in the cinnamon, so we'll link that above too. So check that out. So I'm going to put some cinnamon on my sweet potatoes, just like that, put a little cinnamon. And then I'm going to put some honey in it just to sweeten it, just a teeny bit. You know, maybe like a tablespoon or two of honey in there. All right, so I'm just going to plop that in here. All right, yeah, it's, it's, it's rarely rainy today. I know so many people are getting snow. We're getting lots of rain. It's just been the craziest January. All right, so when I get ready to prepare this burrito, I'm going to put cheese on top, right? So I make homemade cheese. You can do that at home if you have your own um, av availability for milk. You can make your own cheese. But if you're going to buy cheese, and I know a lot of people buy cheeses, you get cheese and it's orange, right? Well, what they do is they put a coloring in it called a natto coloring. 
Um, it's also called Ruku, but it, um, it's, it's Anato is the name you see mostly. And they say that it's, it's great because it, it's plant derived. But let me tell you guys, this is, and I, I brought this just to show you, this is white cheddar. If you're getting any cheese, if it has Anato on it, I would not get it at all. Make sure you can get white cheeses that don't have anything. Look back at the ingredients and make sure it doesn't say Anato because Anato food coloring is, um, causes a lot of sensitivity, especially with autistic children. I know all the dyes people are getting away from because they're causing so much problem, especially in kids or if you're sensitive to those things. The anato coloring is causing major problems. So let's say you're taking all this out and you're still noticing problems with your children. It's probably, it could be from this anato. So do your research on it and check. But like when, if I'm gonna buy cheese, I make sure I always get white cheese. Okay, so just a little tip. All right, so. Moving on, what I'm gonna do now is get my burrito. You can make homemade burritos, okay, at home. I'm using sprouted burritos, or you could use corn tortillas. Get organic, make sure you get organic, and um, that's how you can make it. So if you want a gluten-free version, use the corn tortilla, organic tortillas. Um, you can do the sprouted wheat, which will be a little bit easier on your digestive system. You could do flour tortillas make sure that um, you just pick one that works for your family. Very easy. And this is something that's quick. You know, half the time, you know, everyone's hungry, they want to eat. This doesn't take long to make it all. I just kind of throw it together. I'm going to go ahead and crumble my cheese over it. That's why I like this homemade cheese because it's easy to crumble. In the background. It's such a rainy day. The dogs are in here. You could hear our dog Faith snoring in the background. She's enjoying these rainy days. Make sure when you guys are doing your salt that you're doing an unrefined sea salt. Alright, so then I'm going to fold it just like this. Smush it down. That's a big one for Doug. Like that, fold them, fold them, and then I'm going to put them in the oven at 350 for 10 minutes, and I will be back to show you the finishing or the finished product. Okay, I'm going to take it out. And I'm going to show you how I kind of doctor them up. You can just eat them plain like this. They're fine like that. Or... So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little sour cream in it. And there, I just like, I like them plain. So if you don't want to put anything into it, you don't have to. And then a little salsa. And then we'll go ahead and put a, you can put a little avocado in there too. And my sprouts that I make. I'll link that above too. Check out sprouting. I just did one on broccoli sprouting. And then here's your burrito right here. Kind of messy. Whoops, it's falling apart. Doug needs to eat it. How is it? It's good? Yeah, one thing with these is you can also, if you want to put hamburger in them, you can put hamburger in them if you want to bump them up with more meat. But really, these are really filly, aren't they good? He, li he likes them. I mean, I love them. I think they're really good. And then, like I say, you don't have to put um, any of the sprouts. You can put lettuce on them if you want to. Um, you know, or you don't have to put anything on them at all. I know usually young kids generally just like it with the insides, but they're really great. I guess the main thing to take away is that it's really frugal. You can grow all this stuff right in your garden. You guys are planting your gardens right now. So this is something that, uh, you know, you can make on the fly out of your garden in season. Good stuff. They are good. We'll be right back because I'm going to show you this really great dessert. It's like my new favorite. Bonus feature. Yeah. Okay, here's your bonus dessert. Now the theme of this frugal family food today is is healthy. And you got cuckooed. So um, I'm going to show you a gluten-free um, dessert that is just great. And you could make it really healthy. I'm going to give you a couple options that you guys can do with it. What you're going to need is a full cup of peanut butter. Make sure that you're getting the natural peanut butter and make sure, and you can read on the labels, it'll say no non-GMO. 
Um, Smuckers has one if you do buy them, which is non-GMO and you can get the organic. Just check, or if you can grind your own, if you have um, you know abilities to do that at home, just make sure it doesn't have any sugar, it doesn't have anything in it, because a lot of people, have, a peanut butter has sugar in it. So you want to use your peanut butter that is not sweetened, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put a nice full cup of peanut butter in there. It's your choice if you want crunchy, like I like the crunchy, so you can put crunchy peanut butter in there if you want, or if you don't like the crunchiness, then you use the creamy a half cup of unrefined coconut oil. You want unrefined because you want to kind of have that coconutty taste. When you get the refined coconut oil, that's when you don't taste it. So if you guys didn't know the difference, that's what that is. About a half a cup of honey. Honey, honey. All right, and that's gonna go in there too. I'm gonna set on the stove for just a couple minutes and then I'll come back. This is quick and easy if you're in a pinch for a quick dessert for your family. I'm going to put it on our wood-burning cook stove, and I'll be back in about five minutes. All right, so here is my melted honey and coconut oil and peanut butter. And now what I'm going to do is put in, I'm going to show you this. This is from Aldi. So I know you guys, a lot of you shop at Aldi. Um, it's baking chocolate and it's unsweetened and it's from 100% cacao. Now, um, I really like this. It's unsweetened. And if you look on the label back here, it is just 100% cocoa salads. I mean, there's no um, fillers, there's nothing in it. And it's unsweetened because I already put some honey in here and I put my own raw honey in there and I sweeten it myself. Another option you can do, it really tastes good with this one. But if you don't have that, just good old fashioned baking cocoa, which is unsweetened, will, will work too, okay? So if you are gonna do the cocoa, I would do you know a couple heaping tablespoons. Other than that, I'm gonna use about half this bar and I'm gonna put it in there. If you don't have either one and you have chocolate chips, you could use about a cup and a, a fourth, a, a cup plus a fourth of the um, chocolate chips in there. So I'm gonna break this in here and just let it kind of melt. All right, and then oatmeal. You don't want the quick oats. Do about two cups of the just regular rolled oats. And then you want unsweetened. Just remember, all this is gonna be unsweetened. Sugar is your enemy. You control your sugar, honey or maple syrup. All right, so here we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put about a cup of unsweetened coconut flakes in there, just like that. And then we're gonna save a few extras and we can put some on top of it if you'd like. And then I'm going to, and this is optional. So depending, if you like nuts, you can put them in. If you don't, I'm gonna put some pecans I have left over. So here's some pecans. If you wanna put walnuts, you can. It's your choice. Or don't put any nuts in it at all. And then I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm gonna mix it all up. Just like that. And then I'm gonna put it in a pan with parchment paper. And then you're gonna cool it. So you can put it in the, um, in the refrigerator, in the back room, out in your garage, let it cool for a couple hours. And then uh, you can cut it and then eat it. Lop it in there. Throw that way. I washed my hands. <laughs> Okay, spread this all out. And I want to thank Amanda and Tangie again for asking me to do this because this is so much fun. So I will be back in just a little bit and show you the finished product of this one. What? Don't hate. These are good. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed our frugal family food collaboration video. Stacy showed you guys how to make something that you can grow in your garden. You don't even necessarily have to use any ingredients from the store, but you could do it from the store, and it's still super frugal, inexpensive meal uh, to put together. And then as an added bonus, she put on the dessert at the end. 
uh, which you guys uh, saw. <laughs> I got busted. Uh, so that's really good too. So don't forget to check out Tangie the Caver's Wife and Amanda over at the Fundamental Home. Uh, they're the ones who put together the collaboration for the Frugal Family Food uh, collaboration. And they also have a Facebook page that you might want to go check out, the Frugal Family Food Facebook page. This is Off Good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug, and we'll see you guys on the next one.